Welcome back. Idaho State with a big win today over Northern Colorado, 71 to 56. And uh, we've got a few people lined up for post-game interviews. And the first one we're going to talk to today, a young man who uh, familiar with the program at Idaho State for quite a while, went to Cal Poly out of Highland High School in Pocatello. Dax Carr, welcome to the broadcast. And how does that first Big Sky win feel? Hey, it's crazy. Yeah, you should have seen us in the locker room just now going crazy. It's, it's good to win a game. Good to win a game. <laughs> it is good to win any game, but especially on the road in the Big Sky Conference. Uh, did you think it would come this early? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we put in the work every single day. I got a lot of faith in our guys, got a lot of faith in our coaches. So, I mean, it's not a surprise to me that we can come win a game this early. What's it been like sitting out all last year and – finally being able to suit up and play basketball. It's great. I mean, it's a lot better than I expected, too. I mean, a year not doing what you love, it's it's a long time. And then I'm back here with all these guys that I played with last year. I mean, these are my guys do everything together. So it's been great. What was tougher for you, sitting out last year or going through all the COVID-19 restrictions this year? Sitting out last year because at least this year we get to play, you know. Who's your roommate this year? Uh, Austin Smaley. Well, you guys, a uh, couple of Idaho boys staying together. You guys lose by five yesterday. Uh, Bodie Hume had 27 points in that game, and you held him to eight today. He fouled out, and you win by such a huge 15 points today. What do you think turned it around from just 24 hours from yesterday to today? Uh, one of the big things that uh, us as a team uh, we talked about was our scouting report. Um, on our scouting report, it was not let Bo uh, Bodie Hume shoot any threes. And yesterday, we let him get a few off. And uh, today, we took pride in not letting Bodie Hume shoot threes uh, and let him play one-on-one -on -one in the post if that's what they wanted to do. So I, I would say just following scouting report is what we did. Dax, what are some of the personal goals you have being with the Bengals this year? I think the biggest thing for me being Bengal is I want to win the Big Sky Championship this year. I think that's always going to be number one. And then second, I would say just growing as a team. I mean, from our first game to now, we've already grown so much. And I think with a lot of games left, we have a, a lot of big chance to grow. A big chance to grow. Do you think you guys made a statement to the rest of the league today? I hope so. I hope they're all watching. I really hope they're watching the game. The Bengals are coming. Dax, I'll let the other guys have a turn at you. Yep, thank you. You can stay there. Oh, oh, oh. oh all right. <laughs> hey, Dax, and thanks so much for taking time. Um, what uh, what specifically? I, you mentioned try not to let Bodie Hume shoot any threes, but can you take me through the specifics of how you do that? Um, so with him, they set a lot of screens for him, and we were just trying to trail off the screens, close them out, make him drive. We wanted him to score off the dribble in the paint if we could. It seems like you guys, um, as posts, do a really good job of, of boxing out and letting others kind of grab rebounds. Um, how much of an emphasis is the coaches placed on that of, of making sure to work um, and, and getting those rebounds? I think it's a big part of our team identity, actually, uh, boxing out and playing defense, because if we can control that end of the court, then there's no team that can beat us because they can't score, they can't get rebounds. You know? How tough was it last year um, when you're sitting on the bench and you have to watch them put like uh, Malik out at center and you know that you, you could be the tallest guy and, and be out there playing that position, but obviously the waiver didn't go through. I mean, is that tough to watch? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to watch, you know, and I could probably go in and do something. But at the same time, I trust in those guys to go out there and do the same thing that I would want to go out there and do. So, How does your length um, just help you uh, in all areas? To call me. Uh, I feel like I could cover a pretty big uh, portion of the court and just flying around on defense. Uh, what what does Braden do so well, and what do you guys need to do to to make sure that he kind of keeps uh keeps up the hot streak? He uh he's big, he was really patient in post today, and he's just a, <clears throat> he's got a great touch for how big he is, so it's really hard to guard him. Anything else, guys, for Daxton? Awesome, <laughs> thanks, Dax. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. It's not wood. It's not wood type of guy. Yeah. <laughs> Just beat the hell up. <laughs>
Well, for the uh, second game in a row, we, we get the big kid from Preston, Idaho. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll always, I will forever be grateful to you, Braden Parker, for helping me move this last summer. But uh, congratulations on a career game, 26 points, 8 of 13, uh, 9 of 13 at the free throw line, 6 rebounds. You had 3 block shots. Uh, 21 points yesterday, but you seemed much more dominating today. What do you want me to say about that, Jerry? <laughs> well, how does I it just, feel? I, coaches, uh, they depend on the game plan, and they want me to execute, and I think I did a okay job at it today. You know, I, I, I just hear an eight, 8 for 13 is not good. Um, if I get 10 for 13, that's two more, two more buckets, four more points. Doesn't seem like a lot, but, you know, we're just getting there. What in your mind was different about yesterday's game, a five point loss and today's game, a 15 point win, a 20 point swing? Um, just just us dialing in. Yesterday, I, I talked more about scout report. And today we really, every play call out there, we were, hey, it's this, you know, this is how we guard it. And everybody was dialed in. Um, we watched film last night, like, we, like I said uh, yesterday. And there was guys after, um, watching watching the film we wanted to uh, review it again so we we watched film for maybe an hour and playing a whole game you know you get your body gets fatigued you want to just go to bed but no one wanted to do that we wanted to get better and we wanted to keep on just keep on getting better every day how does it feel getting that first big sky win it's great it's great <laughs> so um you think you can play in this league don't you <laughs> uh, Still early, but I'm doing all right. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it, your humility is, uh, I think, one of your greatest traits. And uh, I think that's what allows you to keep working harder from game to game. Just because I watched you all last year when you couldn't play. Yeah. And we would go on the road and everybody else was doing other things and you were going to the workout room and pumping weights and doing all kinds of different things because uh, you were hoping against hope, I'm sure, that maybe there's a chance you might be able to make it back from that foot injury. But how does how does that foot feel? My foot feels really good. Um, uh, end of the half, the second half, I tweaked my other ankle, but it's just a tweak, not a big deal. Um, I came out, I think my body was in shock. That just happened again, just unroll. And um, so I, I, I was very precautious. I told Coach Lynn, I said, hey, you know, get me out. I want to see how it feels. And then we got out and it feels fine now. So it's just, now it's just been back to what I need. And hopefully we have a couple off days and we just get going, get going again. What do you like best about what this coaching staff does to prepare you guys to play? Well, um, we had to talk yesterday and me personally, I didn't know how much uh, goes into a scout and uh, coach Looney kind of broke it down for me and the whole team. And it's just crazy that they're giving us the game plan and how, and just kind of the ways of what the game's going to look like. And if we can follow those rules, we get the victory, whatever we got today. So it's just, we just got to really take prepare, uh, preparation of listening to the scout and taking it full on. Braden, I'm going to let Jordan Kay of the Journal take over now. Yeah. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, you wait. So you just mentioned that you guys, or Coach Looney, was explaining everything that goes into a scout. He, he did that last night. So we we had a heart to heart last night, the whole team, um, and it was basically showing that yesterday, you know, we had a few errors yesterday, and today. We, we had very little errors to zero to none. Um, and it was just in the mere fact, everybody took the scout that was prepared for us to heart and that's what happens. Yeah, so he kind of went through it basically like, I'm giving you guys the study guide to, to ace the yeah. test and yeah. you should use Here's it. Here's the answers, use them. We didn't use yeah. them today. Um, it, it seemed like, uh, like Daxon was mentioning, you were extremely patient in the post. Um, is, is that something you really tried to work on uh, just over the night or today? Yeah, um, every time I come out, uh, probably I have Coach White and Coach Mack yelling, be patient in there, um, uh, do what they give you. So it was just, 
just me trying to slow down again, see where the defense is, and then hopefully make a read off it. You guys have only been out rebounded one time this season. Um, what's led to you, uh, your success on the glass? Crashing four every time. You know, it's just when it comes to rebound, it just comes to will, just will and effort. And I feel like that we have a lot of will and effort for it. You yeah. know, well, what was our rebound margin today? Uh, I think it was like 10, eight, maybe. Seven, 32 to 25. Them or us? You guys. Yeah, so it's, it's basically just getting we, – we box out and we do rebounding drills almost every day. And if we mess up or something, we, we get told about it and we got to adjust and keep on fixing it. So it's just basically goes back to practice of understanding and how important a block out is. How much does Daxton's length help you guys? Tremendous. You know, he's as tall as me, athletic. He's just a great, great guy. Um, and when he crashes the board, it's it's hard to get a rebound. When I'm uh, when we're in practice, it's hard. You know, if yeah. it's a fifty-fifty ball, he's going to get it almost eighty percent of the time. So he uh, he seemed to be locking down uh, Bodie Hume today. Uh, is that something that you guys have seen in practice for a while now? Just his ability to be locked down on those tall wings. Yeah. So. Um, Dax is a great lengthy defender. He understands what uh, what needs to be of him. And I think he did great tonight. Um, yeah. And then the people that came on and like Austin, Emma did good, uh, Malik. There's not just one guy that does good. You know, it's a, it's a team effort. And I think we did great. Do you and him as guys who had to sit out last year take extra pride in, in kind of contributing just because you know what it was like to, to not have basketball? Yeah, we, we got the feeling of missing the sport we love. And I think we came out and we're coming out and we're just giving it all. And that's all we can, that's all we can do. Good. Anything else? Brayden? Sweet. Thanks, Braden. Thanks. Have a good one. Hey, Braden. Hey, guys. Hey, Ryan, congratulations. Uh, great game plan. And uh, if you look at numbers individually, obviously eight points and fouling out Bodie Hume, a huge difference from his 27 yesterday. And uh, Braden comes up with another big game. Uh, but you really got Malik into the offense today as well with 13 points. And we saw a lot of the old Malik in that game today uh, with him being – four for four with a couple of those monster dunks. Yeah, we had a huge emphasis uh, to get uh, the ball in the paint. Um, Braden has been slowly getting better every single day. He just really needed some time after that injury last year uh, and some reps on the floor against a different opponent uh, other than just practicing uh, every day. Um, his patience in there was unbelievable. I think it's slowly getting better every day. Uh, we knew going into the game, Northern Colorado was probably going to try to play him one on one in the post, and they did that all night again, and and didn't really adjust. A huge part of our plan was to keep throwing it in there to having him deliver, uh, and to see if Colorado would adjust and then maybe leave some of our shooters open. But they never really did. The only thing they did different was late in the game they pressed a little uh, and they uh, fell back into a zone. Uh, and then Malik, uh, we talked a lot before the game, uh, even at halftime. Um, him and Gideon Buzangu uh, yesterday were having a hard time offensively because simply their man wasn't guarding them on the perimeter. Um, so we found a, different, a few different places where Malik could dive himself uh, into the middle of the paint uh, on Braden's post catches uh, where his man was helping a little bit and Braden was a good enough passer uh, to find Malik on those cuts. Going from a five-point loss yesterday to a 15-point win today where you led, uh, obviously all but about two minutes of the game uh, at the very start, that's a huge swing in back-to-back -back games. Besides the final score today, what were you most pleased about with the play of your guys? Well, I just uh, talked about it in the locker room with them uh, in regards to how proud I was of them bouncing back and doing the best job they have uh, up to this point 
understanding and trusting how valuable a scouting report is. Um, we laid out exactly what we thought we needed to do defensively. Uh, I don't think our, our team made too many mistakes on that end of the floor tonight. Uh, you look at the final score, we held them to 56 uh, points. Uh, last year, Northern Colorado was one of the top two offensive teams uh, in the big sky. They were a nightmare to guard. Uh, and our guys adjusted. They believed uh, in the plan that was put in front of them, uh, went out and executed. And I, I would say they did the same thing on the offensive end floor. A big emphasis for us was to feed the ball to the post uh, and see if they would adjust uh, how, how they were going to guard. And like I said, they never really did. And our guys just kept at it uh, from start to finish. How concerned were you or are you with the 20 turnovers again in the game? I'm always concerned with it. Um, a lot of them came late in the game when they started to press us. We got sped up a little bit. Um, we did get a couple timeout situations where we attempted to do different things against it. And I think our guys adjusted in that moment too. I think the, the last few possessions there, we were able to take care of the ball and get it to the right places. Well, you got Christmas coming up and then uh, on New Year's Eve, Weber State set to come in for a seven o'clock game uh, at Reed Gym for your third Big Sky game. What's your schedule for the coming week? We are going to shower up here right now. Um, we're going to head straight to the airport and fly back uh, to Salt Lake and bus to Pocatello tonight. We'll get there probably 2 a.m., uh, I would imagine. And then, Jerry, for the next couple of days, the whole entire team is going to be at my house. Um, everyone is is staying in uh, – in Pocatello um, for the break. Obviously, COVID-19 has created it that uh, for us as well. It's hard for our team to be able to travel home and spend time with family and then still be able to follow all the testing protocols uh, that we have to, to be cleared to play against Weber. So my wife and kids, they've been getting stuff organized for I don't know how long. They got all kinds of stuff for, for the guys when they get over there tomorrow. Coach, I'll ask you one more question, then I'll let Jordan uh, take over. You win by 15 today on the road over a team picked to finish in the top half of the big sky. And I asked Dax this question. Is this, do you feel this is any kind of a statement game for you guys to the rest of the league? I do, uh, absolutely. I mean, I, I've kept uh, hoping that people can stay patient with us. That our fans are going to continue uh, to root for the Bengals. We've simply just needed time. Um, we were extremely disappointed with our uh, performance yesterday. Feel fantastic about uh, what we got accomplished today. Truthfully, Jerry, if we just did a little bit better job following our scout and limited a couple uh, mistakes in the second half of yesterday's game, we might be 2-0 and right now. Well, congratulations. It was a, a great win today, and I'll let Jordan take over. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, Brian, uh, I think it was Braden was saying after yesterday's game, you guys kind of had a heart-to-heart, -heart and you told them everything that goes into a scouting report and how important that is. Um, what Do you think they, they kind of got that message today? Definitely. I mean, that is the most prepared our team has been uh, in a game since I've coached at Idaho State. Um, the report or scouting report we delivered to our team hasn't been any different uh, than any other game uh, that our staff has been a part of so far in the short year and a third maybe so far. But um, I was upset with our attention to detail after yesterday's game. I had everyone huddled up uh, at the hotel. We watched um, a lot of film um, of yesterday's game. Uh, and then I literally broke down exactly what goes in to our coaching staff uh, getting that ready for them to play. How many hours of films watched, how much time it takes to put all the information uh, onto paper, uh, how many times our staff meets and talks about different ways to defend uh, who we're playing against, different ways they'll guard us and how we have to try to score. Um, I think it opened some of their eyes. Uh, to the point where they now understand that the attention to detail that it's going to take to be successful uh, when playing at this level um, 
and I said it before a little bit ago, like I'm proud of our guys for growing up and understanding that now. Um, they just got rewarded for how much time they put in yesterday after yesterday's game uh, and early this morning uh, again. Had you ever done that to it with a team explained and went through kind of set by set everything that goes into it? Yeah, I think uh, young teams, but you, I think for me, you got to pick and choose what the right moment is. That, I think if you're doing that right after a game that you win, probably doesn't make as big an impact. You do it right after a game where you get blown out, probably doesn't make an impact. But yesterday's game came down to a couple mental mistakes that we made. If we're as locked into the scout uh, yesterday as we were today, we might be leaving here 2-0 right now. This, this seemed like a game that um, was kind of controlled by like Daxton on the defensive end and Braden on the offensive end, like two guys that you talked about last year and in the preseason about how much they were going to mean. Um, was it the culmination of all that and, and really what they can bring to your squad? I think so. And the beautiful part is they're both sophomores. Yeah. And because of everything that's going on, they're both going to be sophomores again next year. Uh, <laughs> we're going to get to watch. Uh, those two guys play for a long, long period of time. Um, and it's things that I saw all year uh, last year when they couldn't step on the floor. Daxton Carr is our best defender right now. Um, his length and athleticism disrupts a lot of people. Uh, I think Bodie Hume will have a chance to be the MVP of the big sky. And he locked him up tonight. Um, last year's team, we did not have an interior score. Uh, and it was hard because Braden was sitting on the sideline for every game. We knew we had one. We just couldn't put him in there. Uh -huh. uh, and now that Braden's got in some games, uh, has gotten a little bit uh, of experience, um, the game has slowed down for him uh, a little bit, and he's really delivering uh, in there for us right now. Do you, do you feel like you guys and that message you delivered, are you almost glad that it happened um, during the first Big Sky weekend? Because you're going to have plenty more of these back-to-back -back games where there's going to be those nights at the hotel, maybe after a loss or after a win, where you're going to have to do that. Um, what do you think that can do going forward for these back-to-back -back Big Sky games? I think a ton. I've said it numerous times when asked the question about what do I think about the back-to-back -back games within the Big Sky. It's going to benefit a group of guys or teams that can adjust or can understand a scouting report in a short, short amount of time. Um, and our players grew up, proved that tonight uh, that they can do that. We, Dylan, you got anything? I, think it's a, I honestly, Jordan, it's just a byproduct of a young, inexperienced team. Like a, a lot of these guys have been playing AAU and high school basketball. Like it's a whole nother level when you're playing division one. Yeah. I, I'll be honest. I told them last night, if if they uh, if they wanted to just show up and play, um, and not pay attention to a scouting report or how to score on offense against a certain team, or how important it is to guard your individual player uh, a certain way, they maybe should have signed up to play at a little bit lower level. <laughs> this is the elite of the elite here. You got flawless in all phases.